Hey howdy folks, welcome back to Drewman RC. Today I'm going to be switching out the fuel sending unit in this 2006 C6 Corvette. It is an automatic transmission and I'm going to do the job here in the driveway. It should take me about six hours. Uh, this isn't the first time I've done this. It's going to be a pain in the butt. A little bit of a background story. The fuel sending unit in the passenger side tank started going out about four months ago. So I decided to go ahead and replace it. Um, so I replaced that and while I was at it I decided to do the fuel uh, pump as well. Uh, the problem is I ordered the wrong fuel pump. The fuel pump I got is compatible with 2006 to 2013 uh, or 2005 to 2013 but the problem is the sending unit on it is backwards so you'll see it when I pull it out of the tank but the sending unit has its uh, resistance go from uh, low to high instead of from high to low because um, in 2006 Chevrolet and GM and them they flipped them to help deal with the sulfur buildup on the contacts so where in this case, if it gets build up, you're gonna get extra resistance right there. So it'll think that it's got a little bit more, more fuel than it really does or something to that effect um, is what I was reading on the forums. But either way, it's gonna be an interesting uh, project. Hopefully it won't take me all day, but uh, just trying to share some of the lessons that I've, that I've learned. Um, for this project, you're gonna to wanna to have some Ziploc bags and a Sharpie to put parts in like screws and stuff, um, some safety, uh, safety glasses, clear is good. You're gonna need a flashlight. Uh, you're gonna need um, some sockets. You're gonna have to remove the wheels. You're gonna have to jack the car up. Uh, you're gonna need to drop the H pipe on a 2006 uh, in the center of your exhaust. You're gonna need to drop that so you can actually access the tanks uh, and get your hands up in there. It's gonna be tricky if you don't do that or impossible. Uh, also, you'll need a coat hanger. That can be handy, like a metal coat hanger. Here, I'll show you what I got. Uh, metal coat hanger will come in handy when you're fishing out the fuel lines in the fuel tank. Uh, only doing the driver's side today, but uh, I guess the main point of the video is to show that it is possible and to give some tips on how to do it on the uh, automatic Corvette C6. Enjoy the video, folks. Okay, so the next step is to jack up the car. I'm using little jacking pucks. I got one jack on each side of the car. Uh, there's a mount right there. It's about good for now. Okay, next up we're gonna be disconnecting the fuel line right here. Uh, so that we can tap into it and drain the fuel into one of our gas cans. Uh, you're going to need these little fuel line quick disconnect tools. Uh, some paper towels. You're going to want to put them underneath there. There is a little metal clip on the fuel line that you pull up and push down on. Take that little clip off. Set it aside. Don't forget to reinstall it later. Paper towels underneath there. Going to want to be wearing gloves for this. Um, I'm going to prepare my gas can down here on the ground. Okay. And I'll be using this uh, five feet length of three eighth inch fuel line tubing to run down to the gas can. And then also use a piece of paper towel to block the hose from rubbing up against the car. So I've got that on standby to connect to that line. I'm going to use a little fuel line quick disconnect. I think that's the wrong size actually. Let's see. It's gonna kind of clip over there. Clip over the line and then you pull up on it and kind of wiggle it around till you get it. There it is. See? A little bit of gas splash, but that's okay. That's why we had a rag there. Okay. Pain in the butt, but we got it. Take your little tool back off, set it aside. Clean up any gasoline that got spilled. Try not to get it on your skin because it'll hurt. And give you gas burns. Next up, connect this 3 8 inch tubing. All right, there. Okay. And you can see, tubing runs down. Gotta zoom out for this. I have the tubing running from there down to the gas can. Onward, we're gonna go to the other side to that little fuse box thingy. Okay, so what we're gonna do, 
open up this fuse box cover, zoom right in. We're going to be dealing with this relay switch that controls your fuel pump. We're going to pull that out. Notice its orientation, the numbers towards the center of the car. Lift it up, set it to the side, and then we're going to jumper this connection, this upper left to bottom right. And I've got a little wire that I did up that's got two fuse type ends on it that will plug in there. And what this is going to do is turn on the fuel pump. It's going to put it into the run position. There. Now the fuel pump's running and it's filling up that gas can. All right, so one thing to note is you want to make sure that there's as little fuel in the tank as possible before you attempt this. Now that can be tricky if your fuel gauge isn't working to tell how far you've got left, so I had to estimate. Uh, but you can see with those wires jumpered, the fuel pump is running and pumping fuel into this gas can. This is the easiest way to get fuel out of the fuel tank that's remaining. I've got a five gallon can here. I've got a two gallon can off to the side. Um, and I've got more, you know, more capacity upstairs, but I'm hoping that there's not more than this in the tank. Uh, you'll be able to tell. It'll start slowing down and then it'll get down to just a trickle. Uh, you're gonna wanna run the fuel pump until it runs the tank dry. That's the easiest way to do this job is with no fuel in the tank. Cause once we drop them, we're gonna have to kinda when you're doing this in a driveway, you're going to have to roll the tank on its side to pull it out from under the car, unless you have a higher jack. Uh, but when you roll the tank, you can spill gas if there's any in the can. So that's something that we're going to attempt not to do. Another note is that when you're dealing with this gasoline, if you get it on your skin, uh, on your hands, it's not so bad. But if you get it on like your leg skin, your arm skin, or on your face, it can actually give you chemical burns. Uh, I've learned this firsthand. But we're just going to keep running the fuel uh, pump until the tank is empty. Okay, the one tank is almost full. I'm going to lay down some paper towels. You can see the trickle is really slowing. The five gallon can is almost at a good level. And then I'm just going to real, I mean, I could go shut off the gas, uh, the gas pump, but there's really no reason. I'm just going to real quick move it down. All right, and now it's in that one. A little bit of splash on the can, but we'll just dry that right up. Okay. Now our second gas can is filling up. I'll move this one back a little and go ahead and cap it. Another item to note is that it's good to have a fire extinguisher handy when working on a fuel tank. All right, once that fuel stops running or comes to a very slow trickle, just go ahead and disconnect that jumper. Uh, you can replace the relay switch at this time close this. Next up we're going to disconnect the negative battery terminal. And to do this you need a little 10 millimeter socket. Going to disconnect the negative terminal. Okay, what I like to do is I like to take this and put it inside a Ziploc bag just so I know it's completely insulated from touching anything and it's just peace of mind for me to know that I've got my conductors insulated probably overkill okay so that's that piece that'll be there the whole time until we're ready to connect it back again and at this point you can also go ahead and disconnect the hose when you pull this off it's going to leak some more gas so get some paper towels handy you want to keep the other end still in the bucket you can pinch the tube to help a little bit raise the tube up so that all the fuel in it will run down into the gas can there we go and then set that aside. Next up, taking off the wheel. I like using a breaker bar and a 19 millimeter socket. Deep socket. Gas tank's still open. Since I've got the e-brake engaged, I can break these off while they're in the air. There we go. You notice I haven't put my jack stands up yet, but I will do that as soon as I get the wheel off. I guess you could do it now, but I don't feel like going underneath the car at this second. Got them all finger loose, there we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, and I'm gonna kinda use my foot to get up under there, lift up, and pull off. And I'm gonna roll this out of the way, up onto the grass. 
I'm gonna take a Ziploc bag and put my lug nuts in there. Just keep everything nice and organized. Okay, also, at this time, I will go ahead and place my jack stand under there. Now, I'm no expert, but I look under the car, I look for something that looks solid. So there's a good chunk of metal right here. So I've been using that as my safety point. Set my jack stand right there for safety. Next up, what we'll be doing is we'll be removing these seven millimeter little screws. I think there's close to 10 of them. There's one there, there's one there, another one up there, uh, another one there, another one there, another one there. There's a couple underneath the back. I wanna say four there and then one under the front. Optionally, you can do these little body clip pieces, but it's not actually necessary. Um, getting all the screws is enough to get the wheel well out, which is our next goal. All right, so there's, I got two tools out here. I've got the little seven millimeter ratchet and socket combo. Oops, that's tighten it. Once I've got them loose, I've got a little screwdriver. You can pull them right out. And you'll want to pop these little things in a Ziploc bag so you don't lose them. Okay, the rest of them are on the underside. We got one right here towards the front of the car next to this little air inlet pipe which redirects air for your brakes. Okay. And the other one on the other side, there's actually four of them back here. So I'll get that next. One. Three. All right. Four. All right, there's all four. Next up, we're gonna drop that wheel well. So, to do that, got all the screws are out. Pull that to the side. There it is. And then I'll set that off by the wheel. Next up, we're going to be working underneath the car. We're going to take out the H pipe, which runs the length of the car. It's going to require a 13 and a 15 millimeter socket. Uh, there's 15 millimeters. There's two bolts up here, uh, one on each pipe, or excuse me, two on each pipe. So four right here. And then in the back side, you've got one per pipe. Uh, those are all 15 millimeters. And then there's a hanger up here that uses 13 millimeters. I'll show you that in a sec. Here's the setup. Here's the setup that I like using. So you got your ratchet. I'm gonna use an extension. I'm gonna use this adapter that'll allow me to put on these larger sockets. And then I'm gonna start off with the 15 millimeter. And then I'm gonna go under the car. Alrighty, so using that 15 millimeter socket, just gonna put it on there. Make sure you're going lefty loosey. I'm gonna go loosen them all up first. And, then, and, and once I got them all loose, I just walk them right off. Okay. 
Here's another note. When you're working underneath this car, it helps to have like a pillow or maybe a folded up towel inside a large Ziploc or a freezer bag, just so that you're not constantly straining your neck muscles to keep your head up off the ground because the ground can be kind of unforgiving and then the next day you'll have a sore neck. It'll almost feel like you have a sore throat because you use the muscles on the front of your neck to hold your head up. There we go, one more to go. I think that's loose enough, there we go. All right, so this part can be kind of tricky depending on how tight these are. You might be able to loosen them, pull them off, but sometimes you gotta whack at them. Let's see. Just kind of work them back and forth. There we go. There's that one off. This one's putting up a bit more of a fight. Okay, I'm just gonna use the wrong tool for the job and pain in the butt sometimes. There it is. That's loose. Good. Now for the other side. Okay, you get a washer nut in a kind of half shape washer thingy. And I set those underneath the jack stand so I don't lose them. And on the other side. Okay, next up we're gonna get those 13 millimeter socket put on and I'll change the camera angle so y'all can see what I see. There's one, setting them underneath my jack stand so I don't lose them. Now, once you release this one, all that's really holding the exhaust up is friction in the front. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna fall. I don't know. I hope it doesn't fall. That'll look silly. Um, yep, there it goes, it fell in the front. Uh, let me change the angle so you can see what happened. So now it's dangling down in the front, but that's okay. What I'm gonna do now is lay down underneath this piece and use my feet to put downward pressure on it and I'm gonna wiggle the whole thing to get it to pop off. Okay. So it's kind of tricky. You're gonna wanna maneuver underneath the thing. Kind of wiggle. Uh, wiggle, 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 wiggle underneath so now I'm gonna lift up with my feet and just wiggle this thing put some downward pressure right there and boop there we go now my X pipe is pretty loose because I work on it often so I'm able to just pull it right off now I'll set this to the side there we go and then I'll get out from under the car Okay, I noticed a slight mistake that I made. Um, I have the jack stand, the little bolt, or excuse me, the jack, the bolt is facing that way. That's gonna get in the way of dropping the tank. So I'm gonna actually drop the car onto the back jack stand, reorient this, and then uh, and I think that'll get me in business to drop the, uh, the fuel tank. So let me line that up. Lower down the jack until it's sitting on the jack stand. Okay, I can feel the jack is now free from the car. I'm just gonna reorient it the other way and then re-jack it up. Next up, we're gonna do the five 15 millimeter bolts that hold in the Aluminum gas tank. Whoops, excuse me. That is not 15. That's 13. Uh, the five 13 millimeter bolts that hold in the gas can 
tray or whatever it's called, gas tank tray. Since the fuel tank is empty, not going to be a lot of downward force on this thing, which is good. You got two towards the outside of the core. I'm just going to set them next to the jack so I don't lose them. Or you can put them in a Ziploc bag if you wanted to. There we go. And then the other three are closer to the inside of the car. Let's see how can I get a good view on that. Okay, and hitting the other three. And I'm kind of propping it up with my elbow, that way it doesn't fall down on me. But it, it weighs like a pound. Okay. And you can lower that down. And set it to the side. Okay, so next up we're gonna disconnect the lines from the fuel tank. Okay, up top here you've got a, uh, the, the, the gas tank filler tube, which is just held on with like a pipe clamp. You use a flat bladed screwdriver, and you can loosen that up enough to wiggle it off in a second. You've also got an evap line, which you just press on and pull down. That can be a bit of a pain, because you gotta get enough pressure on it, but there you go. Evap lines off. You can twist this a little bit back and forth to get it to drop down. There you go. And then you've got this little electric connector, which can be a bit of a pain to get off. Um, you can use a knife or a little flathead screwdriver. Get it up and underneath to get enough force to pull it off because it is hooked in there, of course. There you go. See, that's what we're prying up on was that little piece with the knife. Just catching that lip and lifting up. So now the fuel tank is only connected with two different uh, connections. There's an evap line, the other end of this thing is under there, and then the crossover tube, which is the biggest pain in the butt in the world. So we'll tackle that next. And I forgot to mention, there's also this fuel line that of course you know goes to the engine uh, that's connected to the gas tank. Uh, I'm going to connect that last, I think, uh, just because there is still gasoline in the line. And as soon as you unplug that, it's going to drip on the ground. So we're going to do that a little bit later once we get the crossover tube undone. Okay, so I'm now lying underneath the car with my feet facing the front of the car. Here is the right side of the transmission looking up at the crossover tube. Um, to get yourself some more clearance to get your hands up in there, even though we're not fiddling with the driver or passenger side tank, I still like unconnecting this piece right here, uh, this connection, and then up there, that little housing or whatever can actually just slide backwards to give yourself some more room to maneuver. I will need a screwdriver or something to help pry that off. But what I'm gonna be doing is pulling on this end of the crossover tube a little bit, pulling down and to the right, while on this other side, let's see if I can get up in here. Um, well, on this side, I'll be trying to get a hold of that crossover tube, a little twisty end part, which has to be twisted counterclockwise a little bit. But there's also a little locking ring that makes this a pain in the butt. It's a plastic little locking ring. So, uh, naturally, this is going to take a little bit of time, and I'm really not going to be able to capture a lot of it on camera just because it's so fiddly. You know, it might take me 20 or 30 minutes just to get that sucker out. Uh, but that's what I'm going to do, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and then we'll move on to, to dropping the tank and actually working on the sending unit. But the crossover tube is the hardest part of this entire thing. Because you gotta get your hands up in there, 
try to feel around for the little locking plastic ring, move that to the side, then twist the crossover tube. And even once the crossover tube is unlocked, then you gotta put force on it towards the center of the car uh, to pull it outside of the tank because it, it inserts into the tank. So an entire pain in the butt, but we're gonna see how long it takes me. Um, and I would say, if you're gonna attempt this, just read the forms and get on there and see the pictures so you can better understand what you're doing because there's only so much I can capture in this video. There's just not enough space to stick the camera up in there while my hands are up there too. Uh, but yeah, here we go. It's kind of a tricky uh, situation because you gotta get your hand up there. You've got this exhaust to contend with. Now you can actually drop the exhaust entirely to get better room, uh, but it's not always necessary. I'm gonna reach up and find my metal clip. I've got my thumb on it, I just twisted it, and I just unlocked the crossover tube. Now, since I've done this so many times, I'm getting good at it, but now what I gotta do is get counter pressure on the crossover tube in order to drop it. I'm gonna reorient my body underneath here, feed out that side, and I need to get pressure on the crossover tube. The crossover tube is held in place with a little thing. There we go. Now I'm gonna get you a camera view so you can see what's going on here. Okay, so here's just a view in between the gas tank and that metal part of the frame. You can see kind of that metal hooky ring thing that connects to the actual gas tank itself. Um, and also down to the left, maybe you can or cannot see it. Let me see from this view. Um, God, that's hard to see. I don't know if you can at all, but yeah, that's a look of what I'm seeing from under here. Um, now I gotta pull that out of the tank. Okay, so using my left hand, going up and in to that side, but I get crap in my way because of that cable's not disconnected. Oh, there you go. I've got it out a little bit. Got a little bit more to go. I'm gonna cut to when I actually got this thing out. All right, I got the crossover tube out. Uh, so now I just need to disconnect this fuel line over here. And then there's an EVAP line up there too that I'll have to get out and then I can drop the tank. So once again, I'll be using my fuel line quick disconnect tool. Uh, also going to be putting down some paper towels on the ground because once I pull this thing, uh, there's probably gonna be a little fuel leakage. In fact, I might just uh, hold this up here, press on it. Okay, so after I got the fuel line disconnected from the pump, I went ahead and reconnected that piece of tubing that I have to this gas line and then just have it routed upwards. That way, it's just not spilling gasoline. Whoops, gotta adjust that. Um, so it just goes up to the side of the car. Um, it, it was dripping a little bit and I didn't want it to drip. So just connected that hose to it and ran it upwards and it doesn't have enough liquid in it, of course, to push it up and against gravity. Uh, either way, there is still a single EVAP line that's holding the fuel tank in. I've got it propped up on a jack stand right now. All right, I'm gonna undo that fuel, uh, the EVAP line, and then I can drop the tank completely. Okay, so I've got the EVAP line disconnected. I'm move some of this crap out of the way. You can set this jack stand to the side. And now the tank is completely disconnected. To get it out, I'm going to roll it. Well, let's see here. Okay, kind of getting stuck. And I have to go up a little bit with the jack. Let's see if I can get another inch or so. Oops. Okay, the jack is pretty much at its max height. The fuel line is looped around this evap line. Okay. Can almost just walk this tank right out. 
Yeah, look at that. Just like that. Okay. So there is the fuel tank in all its glory. You get your connection lines. There's that first evap line, which runs across to this evap line. There's where the there's where the crossover tube connects. You notice I've actually used some little zip ties to hold mine in place because sometimes that'll want to come out when you pull the crossover tube out. So I just zip tie it in place to keep everything where it's at. There's your actual fuel pump. So what I'll be doing next is removing the ring right here, popping that loose, pulling out the fuel pump. So that's the next piece of this project. One thing that I don't think I've mentioned yet in this whole video is that there's two two fuel tanks in the C6 Corvette. You've got each one that holds about nine gallons. You've got the driver side, which has the fuel pump in it. Then there's a the crossover tube, which goes to the passenger side tank, which only has a sending unit in it. Um, how they fill up the passenger side. So the, the driver side will fill up first if it's an empty tank, and then it'll spill over into the passenger side. But then the passenger side tank is actually used up while driving first, and then this side is used up. Uh, that's just for your information. I'm sure y'all have already seen that in the forums, but just reiterating it All right getting this off is fairly simple What we're gonna do is just take a flat bladed screwdriver be careful not to nick the actual fuel tank uh, Gonna put it on this piece Just gonna give it a good couple of whacks Being real careful, you know brace it with your legs or whatever be real careful You don't want it jumping off and puncturing the tank Bring, just like that. Now mine's loose, obviously, because I've been working on it. It can be a lot more of a pain in the butt. Then you just remove that ring. There's that. Set that to the side. Okay, from there, what we can do, and make sure my everything's in shot, we're gonna lift up on the fuel pump. And you see, you got one connection right here. You know, clip on that and pull it down drop it into the tank then you've got a little probably can't see it in the video very well but this little piece right here let me tilt this towards you this little piece towards here is a clip you lift up on that if you can and that'll release there's two tubes that are holding it in right now kind of there you go see that that actually goes down inside the pump which you really don't see anywhere on the forms but yeah when you reinstall it it's pain in the butt but it's doable you know Pop that loose, let that drop into the tank, and get it unhooked if you can, because you're gonna need it out of the way to pull the fuel pump out. Then, gonna lift up on the fuel pump, being mindful that there is a sending unit attached to it. Twist it, okay. Fuel pump is removed. Um, now, the thing about this fuel pump is, you see this? When it's in the down, the wires come out the top, right? That means that it's at maximum resistance when this is in the down position. When this is at the up position, it's at the lowest resistance, the way that little resistor doodad works, right? With that being said, this is the wrong one for this model. Uh, for 2006, the computer is going to uh, translate this signal as meaning when this is down, that means the tank is full. Or yeah, when this is down, the tank is full, and when this is up, the tank is empty. That's false. That's backwards of how it should be. So I've got to remove this one and put on the replacement part. Okay, so I'm gonna set my fuel tank right here for now. I'm gonna clean up my work area, and then I'm gonna bring the fuel pump upstairs for this part of the project. Okay, so I've got the fuel tank, uh, fuel pump upstairs. Um, you can see here, the one that's on there versus this one, right? The wires connect to the bottom here. So when the float is at the bottom, you have the least amount of resistance, right? Versus that one, it's the opposite. So they're just flipped. So to get this piece out is pretty simple. Um, it's held in place. There's a little clippy that you can just push on and then you can raise the float upwards. And there you go. And it's disconnected now. You've got the little green lines to worry about okay and they've got a little bit of slack in them what I'm going to do is simply desolder these two pads and then solder those wires down here I think I think I think I think that that's long enough to reach so that's what's next I'm gonna start off by desoldering this now keep in mind 
these pieces recently had gasoline on them, so you gotta be careful. So, I'm gonna clean off my tips. Kind of peg this down to the ground a little bit. Create some pressure upwards. And just touch the tip to the solder. And pop, just like that, there's one. And the other. Desoldered, okay. This is the easiest way to do it. You don't wanna fiddle with the other terminals. Next up is desoldering from right there. From the one that we're pulling out. Okay, so going to pop the wires out of those little clips, put some pressure on them, pull down on the one and touch it to the soldering iron. Come on iron, I gotta clean it off, it's getting dirty. There's one, and the other. Now it doesn't matter which one goes where when we re-solder it up. Okay, now these wires are kind of twisty, so I'm going to de-twisty them so that I can get some extra length out of them. Just run them right back through there. Okay, so soldering on the new one is going to be more difficult probably. What I'm going to do is get one wire lined up, push down on it a little with these tweezers just to kind of get it pre-lined. Uh, okay, so then what I'm gonna have to do is touch it down to that soldering pad with my iron and get it to stay. So here we go. There we go. And just like that, boom, soldered. Grabbing the next line, pulling it out, getting it prepped. There we go, that's a bit short. Ah, okay. Got it lined up. I'm just gonna pen it down with the soldering iron and get it to, to melt on there. There we go. And just like that, we've got our two solder joints done. Gonna press the wire in a little bit more there. Okay. Uh, soldering joint looks good enough. Then flip it around. These wires kind of run up, and there's a little slot for them. It doesn't have to be in the slot, but of course, it'll make it a neater installation. I'm gonna lay down the fuel pump so I can work a little more efficiently. And I do this off shot to make it easier for me. And just like that, the new sending unit's on there. Here's the old one. You see they're just backwards. So this one had its connections up top, that at the bottom. It's all soldered up. I'm going to go do a continuity test with a multimeter just to make sure it's all good to go. And then I'm going to go back downstairs to reinstall it. Okay, so getting this thing back in is going to be the trickiest bit because you've got those two tubies down there. Um, also, another item of note is on the bottom of these fuel pumps, there's these little rubber rings that can fall off and end up in the tank. So you got to get in there and take those out. Um, the easiest way to do this, I find, is to pull the tubes out of the tank and then drop the fuel pump halfway in, then using some kind of a tool or a coat hanger, grab those lines, connect them, and then sink it all the way down. So I'm going to try to capture that for you. Okay, so the way I've got it in there, I've got some zip ties holding it in place. So I'm just going to bite hold of the zip ties with a needle nose and pull them out. There you go, all four of them are loose. Now this piece can just worm right out. Okay. So what I've got to try to do is hook the end. I use my little coat hanger to hook the end that's got the connection. I can see it, so I'll just hook this in there drop it down. So this part's real fickle. You gotta look down in there, use your little coat hanger, hook on to that tube inside, which is real hard to see. Oh, 
Okay, after a lot of fiddling, I finally got that second tube. So I'm gonna click it on there. Now it's all done up. And just gonna sink the fuel pump down in there. Okay, good. Now, of course, this piece is gonna go there. There is a little notch in there so you know how the fuel pump needs to be facing. You can line up with that and then we'll go grab our little metal hooky piece. Up and over, oops, up and over. You're gonna push down to get the fuel pump to seat proper. And then this piece is pretty easy. I think I've got it on there upside down, yeah. Goes like that. Now this piece, just line up, set it on there, give it a little bit of a turn, and then we're gonna whack it on there with that with our tools. And guys, I'm putting the fuel tank back together, putting this little metal ring on there. You're gonna need to brace it with your legs or something. Being real careful as we're whacking at this thing. There we go. It's back in place. That's back on. Grab my wiring harness. Put that back on there. Now it's time to reinstall it in the uh, in the car. Well, actually, before I even do that. I've got to reattach this. Now see these little legs? They break off. That's why I use them zip ties. So I'm gonna use four little zip ties and get that secured back in place. That's what's next. Okay, so for this part of the project, I'm gonna be using uh, these little zip ties, uh, some, some snips, and a pair of curved tweezers. I'm going to take each zip tie. I'm going to put a bend in there in the head and on the tail end a little bit to help it hook around to pinch it pinch it and that'll just help later on to get it through then i'm gonna start off on this right one bottom right feed it underneath i know my head's in the way and that's okay uh feed it underneath actually which way is it gonna go in fact i might not be able to do this on camera but let me see if I can get one. All right, trimming off the final of the four zip ties. Boom. So now the inside of this sucker is zip tied in there and that'll help it just stay lined up uh, when I put the crossover tube back in there. And if I ever have to remove the tank again, it'll help with that. So that's just my little tip is zip tight and secure it in place because the little hooks that it had on there, they break right off. Now time to put it back under the car. And it's gonna be just the reverse of what we did when we pulled it out, you know? So, we're gonna push it in. There we go. And just kind of turn it. I'm gonna feed the filler tube up into its place. Roughly. I'm gonna get the evap line in the right direction okay so then the next thing to do is to prop it up there partly and then to connect the evap line underneath so for that i'll use a jack stand that i'll wedge under there all right, so it's partly up, and I gotta go underneath and connect that EVAP line. Okay, so there's that tube. Now, I'll work it up a little bit higher, flip that around. Okay, next up, I'll reconnect the fuel line. Well, it's gonna spill a little gas, but that's okay. There we go. Fuel line is reconnected. Don't want 
gonna lose my little tool. Get this pipe out of the way too. Or tube. Okay. Next up is to reach up, get a hold of the filler tube, your vent tube, and feed them through there. Feed them up and through. Tend to be a bit fiddly. And then there should also be a power line that you'll grab. Okay, so I've got all three of my connections available here. I'm gonna change the camera angle. All right, so what I'm gonna do is with my legs, I'm gonna lift the tank up a little bit. So I have all these lines available to me. I'm gonna plug in the EVAP line. I'm gonna get the fuel filler line up on there. And then I'm gonna connect the electrical one. It's looped around a little, so I'm gonna unloop that. Okay. I'm gonna hear that click if we can. So that's connected. Then I'm going to tighten up this pipe clamp. So now that's good and connected. Ew, there's a piece of gum on my screwdriver, yucky. That's probably not even my gum. Gross. Smell like juicy fruit, how nasty. Okay, so now the fuel tank is kind of floating in place, held in place nicely with the filler tube. I've got the two EVAP lines connected, the one here, the one under, and the electrical. Now, I've got to do that crossover tube. And that's gonna be kind of tricky. Um, I'll try and get the camera under there with me. And before I do that, I might as well come back over here and reconnect this fuel line. Get it nice and snug. There we go. I'm gonna set down the camera so I can ensure that it's snug. Little metal piece hooks behind there and over. Good, so now the only other thing we need to do in the engine bay is reconnect the battery when we're done. Okay, time to go underneath the car. Now, believe it or not, it's almost just as difficult to get that crossover pipe reconnected. So, let's see, how do I need to be facing for this? Now, in order to get it on there, you gotta push pretty good. Oh my gosh. It's a good workout. on you there you go there it is i got it hooked on i'm gonna re-hook it once you do it because it doesn't always get all three now i need to find my little plastic lock i think it's on there no it's not where are you at little plastic lock there it is oh man got some crap in my eye that's why it's good too okay Done with that, I'm gonna replace this little piece that I had slid off. And we are effectively done with the fuel tank. Uh, I can even put some gas in the car and start it up just to find out if it's working. So that's what I'll do next. Cheese. Whew. It's a good workout. Okay, in order to get the gas cap open. I have to reconnect the battery because it's an electrical thing. So, let me get this all ready. Set that right there for a second. Okay. Whoopsie, there goes my plastic bag. Okay. Let me get that on. Use my little 10 millimeter. Ratchet and socket. I think I've got this going the wrong way, okay. So the car has power again. So I can go ahead and put some gasoline in it, which I'll do next. Go over here. 
door open. Gas is next. Now keep in mind, when you got the door open and stuff, it'll turn on the interior lights. And we really don't want to run down the battery dead. So I put in about three gallons. That's enough for a test. Remember, I haven't resecured it with the aluminum plate underneath, so I don't want to put it too heavy. Uh, and then I'll, I'll test it real quick. So here goes the test. That's normal because it's got to repressurize the system. It should fire it the second time. Okay, it's working. The gas gauge is now reading properly. Of course, it shows nearly empty because there's only about two gallons of fuel in there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the aluminum tray back underneath there and then I'll start putting the car together. And for this, it's just the reverse procedure of how we got it to where it is now. Now we're just gonna put all five of those little screws back up in there. Once again, it's the 13 millimeter ones. Let's start off with the, huh? The exhaust is getting in the way. There you go. Got one started. Kind of. and snug and bring it forward I'm gonna start it on one of the mufflers there we go start on the other one and just wiggle it so it's nice and properly fitted ah. you can see the lines from where it used to be I got that one on there so I'm gonna grab my Hardware, the little U-shaped piece of metal goes first, then a washer, then the nut. Spin it up, spin it up, spin it up. Grab my ratchet. Right. While I'm down on this end, I'll get the uh, the 13 millimeter nuts as well, but I'm going to flop around real quick and get the tubes lined up. Okay. And I'll come back to this side in a second. But that just makes it easier. Next up, let me move the camera real quick. Okay, let's see if I can get it to a position where you can see what I'm even working on here. Um, next up, of course, is the hanging piece of this thing. So adjusting my lighting. There we go. I need to pop that 15 millimeter socket off, put on a 13 millimeter. Coming over here, we got these dangly spring loaded pieces put it through spin it on same thing on this side pull it through start threading whoops uh, it's getting hot out there we go thread it on We 
we go. Now to the other end. Now, it can be tricky to get these back on there, so sometimes you gotta whack them. There we go. Take our four nuts, start them by hand. And take a ratchet and start torquing. Now you want to make sure you want to make sure that you're tightening them up evenly, kind of, because it's like a gasket. So you can get underneath it and see is it is it going on even. Plenty tight. All done down here. Um, next up is going to be putting the wheel wells back on and then the wheel and then putting everything up, taking it off the jacks and rolling it off the ramps and we'll be done. Okay, so for putting this back up in there, I'm going to kind of loop this around, loop this up, and on this side it goes up and over. There. And of course in. And then on this side, it's going to be up and in. This goes in. This goes up oh, too far. Too much. There we go. That goes in. Okay. Okay. Time to start screwing it up there. I'm getting it in place. So Start off with an easy one. This one. Good enough. Next up, putting on the wheel. Oh, little nuts ready. There we go. Okay. Snug. Lastly, just gonna take the jack stand out from underneath. Lower it down. Forget your jack pucks. I'm gonna go get the other side. Well, folks, that about wraps it up for this video. That's how to do a, uh, a job on changing out these sending units on a 2006 C6 Corvette automatic transmission. It can be done in the driveway. I wanna say I spent about four hours out here, or so, but I'm getting good at it. The first time I ever did this job took me 12 hours. Take your time, be careful, don't break anything. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to post them in the comment section below. And that's all for now, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.